Hello everyone. Let's start making our castle in Google SketchUp. We're using SketchUp Pro 2014 that got updated today for us. So we're going to just go ahead and start off and select the inches and feet standard simple template. You have two sizes of castles that you're going to build. You don't want to download any updates. That has to be taken care of by the district. There is a lot of help that's available for, for Google SketchUp in a lot of different places, including Atomic Learning, as well as the official Google SketchUp site that has some excellent videos, as well as SketchUp files you can open and will do step-by-step -step teaching as well. I'm going to go ahead and close this for now and use my mouse wheel button to orbit the camera. It's very important to learn how to get around inside of Google SketchUp and we use the mouse wheel an awful lot here. If we scroll the mouse wheel, we get a zoom effect. If we click and hold it, we get the orbit camera tool. The hand, keyboard shortcut H, will allow us to pan and move around as well. If you hold down shift and the mouse wheel button, you get the hand as well. So you can easily learn how to move things around, orbit, and pan and zoom here. So get used to getting around in Google SketchUp. For this particular uh, project, I'm going to start us off with a view right about here. And I'm going to zoom out some so she's nice and small. To move her out of the way, I'm going to press the space bar to use the select tool, and then M to click and drag her out of danger. You can make very precise things in Google SketchUp. We're going to do that as a start by using the line tool and going to the origin point, the 0, 0, 0 coordinates, clicking once and then moving out on the red axis. You can see the end point moving. And down here in the lower right hand corner, you're seeing the number that represents the length in feet and inches. I'm going to zoom out a little more. And I'm going to, I haven't clicked again yet, I'm going to actually type on the keyboard 110 and then use the single quote to indicate 110 feet. When I press enter, the line is drawn for me. I'm going to hold down the mouse wheel and the shift button so I can pan over and I can see the end of that line. Now if you're doing the large castle, you're going to go out on this axis, 180 feet. If you're doing the small one, you're going to go 90 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and type 180 feet, and it will make a line that long for me. Now what you can see there is that I was on the parallel line to the green axis. And so when I move over here to draw another line, it'll show me that I'm parallel to the red axis. I'm going to use Control Z undo so you can go back and see me select on the endpoint and then move this around and it'll tell me when I am parallel to the other axis. I'm going to type 180 feet and draw another line and now again I'm going to come over to the green axis. If I'm zoomed out to the right amount it will help me get right to that green axis. It may not look like we're drawing a rectangle when we seal it up, but when we rotate and zoom, you will see that the base for our large castle has been made. If I use my measurement tool, I can actually measure out and show that, yes, that's 110 feet, and this side is 180 feet. Okay, so this is the basis for our castle. Now, you're going to need four towers for your castle, and there's a few different ways of doing that. If you want cylindrical towers, then we need to use the draw tool for the circle. Now, here's the different shapes. If you don't like your toolbars the way they are, you can change your toolbars and include more things, like the drawing tools. So you can see my toolbar has had these tools added on. I can put them over here so that all of the possible drawing tools are visible at one time. Some of them are here, but they're all right here. You can customize that any way you like. 
I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle by clicking on this endpoint where those two, where that corner is. I'm going to click once and then click again after I get the size that I want. Now if I want an exact size such as 12 foot it will make a 12 foot cylinder there. Now because there were lines that intersect them, I'm going to use my space bar or the click on the black arrow here, I can actually see that one of the faces is three quarters and then this is one quarter of the circle. I can click on these lines and press the delete key in order to get the actual full face of the circle. The push-pull tool is when things get really interesting and we can make our tower that way. However, because it was actually touching the rest of it, I have two lines on there and I find that a little disturbing. I don't like that. I want a nice clean cylinder. So what I'm going to do is undo and use the eraser tool to erase my circle. I can erase the line and the circle with it or I can select things and delete them individually. And what I'm going to make is a cylinder that is slightly smaller than the one that was there previously. If I click on the circle again, I need to be in exactly the same spot or it's not going to line up correctly as you can see. So I'm going to undo that and use my tape measure to create some imaginary lines that show an intersection where now Google can help me find where I want the center of my circle. Now I could try and put it right there, but I'll end up with a lot of lines on my cylinder. So instead of a 12 foot radius, I'm going to type 11 feet, single quote, and 11 inches, double quote. Now I have a cylinder that is not actually connected. And I was very careful to keep it kind of lined up there. And you want to make sure and check that right away. Go ahead and use the push-pull tool and pull it up and look at it. So I'm going to use my orbit tool and click and try and take another look at the other side. So now we have a nice clean cylinder for our tower. We can make it any height that we want by grabbing that face. If you want to get to a specific height, there is a good way to do that after the fact by clicking on the tape measure and saying I want it to be 30 feet high and then we have a point whoops let me get the hand tool and now I have a point where I can take that face to P for push pull and now it'll be 30 feet high those measuring lines can be eliminated without hurting the cylinder later now that's one kind of tower I'm use my H tool to go over here to the other corner and I actually prefer a polygon. Notice that it says six sides down here. I'm going to make mine an eight sided figure. Go to the very corner and click and drag out. Now that's still a hexagon. Let me try that again. Eight sides. Be a little tricky here. Click once. Eight sides. Press enter. It's giving me trouble. Let's see. Polygon. Eight sides. There we go. Click in the center. I'm going to make a 12 foot radius again. And you'll notice that I have two vertices on the lines. You may want it to be rotated the other way. But in this case, again, you can delete those two lines, select the face, and you'll end up with a much cleaner flat edges that you can put doors in. Okay, so there are two different kinds of towers. Let me pull that up a little higher. So you can see now we have two towers. And the way to make the walls is to use the offset tool. It's next to the move tool. If I click on it and then I can choose how far in I want the walls to be. So now I have two towers and I have two things I could raise up. 
So I'm going to use the push-pull tool and bring the walls up. Let me try and get that to orbit the camera again. Now these walls need to be 15 feet high. So I can go ahead again after the fact if I want to. Bring them down. Let's take a measurement from here. Now those are 21 feet high. So I'm going to make it 15 feet. Now I have a mark on the wall. I can take that, use the push-pull tool and lower it to the mark so my walls are now 15 feet high. Last thing I want to show you is the crenellations. This is one way to do it. That's the scale button. What I want is the square button. I'm going to start right here and it will tell me when I've got a square. And I can continue drawing squares over and over with help from Google. There's a golden section and then there's a square section. So make sure you're choosing the one that you want over and over again. If you want it to be very regular crenellations. Now I'm going to select this face right here, the P push-pull tool, and I'm going to pull it up some amount. Now I could just guess at these and get fairly close or I can have Google help me make them exactly the same height. I'm going to do P push, click once and start to pull up and then type three feet. Click up three feet. Now if you have shift on or the control, you see that plus, if I were to bring this up it's going to add material and it changes to white. So make sure that you don't have that unless that's what you're after. Click once, three feet. So it's a bit repetitive with this many crenellations, but you can do that fairly easily with Google's help. Same thing for the tower. If I were to make a offset, click on this face, bring it in. Now I'm gonna need to, I can't make squares, but I can use these lines and it will figure out the endpoints. It's not really a perfect circle, so it is able to help us decide where those are. I can click on this and push it down if I want to. I can click on these and pull them up, maybe three feet. Three feet. So you can see how easy it is to get that special defense look uh, to your towers. One more then, I'm going to use the hand tool, go over here, use my offset tool to create an offset here, use my line tool to create some divisions. It does a good job at finding the midpoints for you as well. So you can draw these lines without changing your position if you pay attention to the cues that Google is giving you. It's a very intuitive program, but you have to kind of know what it's trying to guess so that you can, it can help you do what it, you want it to do. I'm not sure that came out right. Nope. So I've obviously been having some difficulties getting my lines. Let me do that again. Perhaps if I draw these first, it'll be a little easier to get those midpoints. And again, we can select, push, pull, bring it up, and guess at it, or click and move it. Type 3 feet or 2 feet or 2.5 feet, whatever it is that you're after. 2 feet, 2 feet, 2 feet. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, one of the easy things to do to get reset if you get lost inside your castle is to click on that and it'll fit everything you've drawn into the view and then it makes it easier to get to where you want to in order to make the things that you want. So you can see the difference between adding, it ends up being white, or just push pulling over here where it stays the same color. And that's the beginnings of your castle.